Hello everyone. What I bring to you today is next important carving techniques, fish carving techniques. So today we take the image of a group of tropical fish. Let's analyze it for everyone. With a while and I will give you a demonstration later. When carving fish, we have to take a look at it first because it lives in water. Its overall posture is more agile and its fins are relatively floating. So at the moment, we should pay attention. Its fins and tail, this kind of fluttering look is great. So next we start our carving. In order to facilitate everyone's observation, we paint a layer of ink on the surface of the blank. Inked area, which is area we want to curve. In this area, we have to make a good composition, because today we are carving fish. If it is a fish, it's a bit lonely. So I will demonstrate a combination of two fishes later, just like this cup we used as an example. So first, we carve the fish at the front. Generally, we can start carving the fish from its head. Our first move. First set the position of the fish's mouth. Then the position of the fish's mouth. Then the fish mouth part. Carve the folds of its lips. Then what? Cap a knife above this fish head. Next to the parts of its gills. Next engrave its eyes. The fish's mouth and fish's eyes are on the head. It's basically like this. Next into its back and its floating fins. Because we have a tropical fish today, its fin will be more flexible. Then to curve the bottom half of the fin. It's also more flexible. When the fins have been portrayed, we get these markings on it. Straps are generally striped. Okay, the fish's body slowly reached the tail. After the tail shrinks, we characterize its fins. We have finished depicting the fish in front of us. We carve the fish and the back to the front. In front of the fish's position, then we are the see. Carve the mouth first. Then to its gills. Eyes. And then to the lower fin and the upper fin. Set the location first. Pay attention to this floating fin. Then to the pattern. Because it has a front and back, so our lines can follow too tightly. There must be a certain amount of space to flow out, make it have a context. Basically such a context, we leave it with a certain amount of the base. The relationship between the two fishes can be distinguished. In some details, we put the fin on its back. Just draw more floating. Then in this case, we will portray the two fishes. Next, everyone can do it on your mat. Follow the steps taught by the teacher as a practice. I hope everyone will portray the fishes look seriously as well as the composition of it. That's it.